Hey world, I am back with another video. Today I figure we would cover some good old fashioned Louis Vuitton. I know my channel has been focused on indie brands quite often and a lot often lately. So let's go back to the basics. Let's just get right into it. Just to let you know, my signature look is usually the curly hair and my red lipstick. My typical lipstick is usually the Glossier. Um, lippies, but I do like to switch things up. And today I am wearing this Tom Ford that was kindly gifted to me by Beauty Lux Lover. And she got me the color fuck foo, foo, F, F fabulous. I can't say this, just want to keep it PG. And it was so kind of her for her to give this to me when we met up in New York City. So that's what I'm wearing today. And she noticed, she noticed that I uh, really like my red lipstick. So that was really nice of her. So it's been a little over a year, maybe a year since I've covered my entire Louis Vuitton collection. And it's really interesting how my style has changed over the year. And if you've been following me for a while, you can, you kind of notice that, right? The, if you haven't seen my original video, I'll definitely link that for you up above and down below. Go check that out. Um, it was a different style of filming back in the day that I did where you just see my fat fingers. <laughs> I will tell you that my Louis Vuitton collection has pared down dramatically. I had seven pieces from Louis Vuitton and no accessories. So I'll just kind of go into what my thoughts are on Louis Vuitton because many of us have started our luxury journey with Louis Vuitton and they are just such an iconic brand. They have built an entire empire. As much as we all like to hate on Louis Vuitton sometimes and their tactics and their methodology in terms of pricing and what they design, you cannot deny how well they are at marketing and branding. And there are many content creators out there that have built their entire channel based on Louis Vuitton. And I applaud them for that because it takes a lot for you to have that much passion for one specific brand. And I, I really appreciate the dedication and the loyalty to a brand. And I do applaud Louis Vuitton for being able to do that. For me, I I like to dabble. So I don't like I am not a diehard, you know, brand specific. I like to have variety. Enough yibber abbering. Let me just show you what I do have left and what I'm thinking about in terms of my Louis Vuitton collection moving forward. So let's start with the two pairs of sunglasses that I do have from Louis Vuitton. I freaking love Louis Vuitton sunglasses. If you look at their designs, they are very extra, but at the same time, they're very low key. Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't done too much research on Louis Vuitton sunglasses. I know for most um, sunglasses, either, you know, with the big luxury brands, Gucci, St. Laurent, et cetera, et cetera, Loewe, they are all made by one specific company. Whereas Louis Vuitton, I think they're, they have their own in-house sunglasses, you know, department and they make their own. I could be completely wrong, but that's also why you see a lot of these companies and their sunglasses go on sale because they're all made by one company. I think it's called Luxor, 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 Luxor something. But this is the first pair of sunglasses that I purchased from Louis Vuitton. I did buy these pre-loved and these are like so extra <laughs> and I freaking love it. The amount of compliments I get for wearing these sunglasses is unreal. But this is the Damia Shuffle sunglasses. And I think the both of these pairs actually came from the men's collection. But look at this. They do have nose pads and I, I have a low nose bridge. So I do need nose pads for majority of the sunglasses out there. But every time I wear this, I, I literally wear this with any outfit. And it just gives that extra spruce and you know your aesthetics and your style out of the 20 pairs of sunglasses that i have i will say th these are probably my favorite ones the second pair of sunglasses i purchased when i visited greece and i wanted to get a pair of sunglasses again i think they're super unique these are also from the men's collection and I believe that they still sell these on Louis Vuitton's website or if you go in stores. But look at how cool that is. They've got the iconic uh, logo right here and the hardware. And then, of course, the sparkly a detail that's right on the side. And then what's the best part about this is on the top. Check that out. Isn't that cool? And I think a lot of the 
SLGs as well as their Petit Mao, I think, have this kind of hardware. And it's just cool that they were able to build it into a pair of sunglasses. And these are kind of low key, but then they're kind of extra as well. So I really like these a lot. I haven't worn them. And my biggest complaint about Louis Vuitton sunglasses are their cases. They're cool, but they're so freaking big. Look at this. How am I going to fit this in any of my mini bags? Or if I fit them in regular bags, they take up half of the space. So I tend to use either their soft pouch right here, which I don't prefer that because it is vulnerable for these to get crushed or sat on or something. So I tend to grab a different case from another brand that's a little bit more compact to carry the sunglasses around with me when I'm not using them. This is my first Louis Vuitton bag ever. I purchased this in store. Uh, I can't even remember. I think I have the receipt somewhere. But this was when my friend was still working at Louis Vuitton. And of course, I was just like, I'm a big girl now. I'm going to purchase my first Louis Vuitton because now I'm making some money. And I think when I purchased it, I was just like, oh my God, this is so much money. I can't believe I'm buying a bag that costs so much money. And I, I was having like a complete mental meltdown. <laughs> I want to say this bag, I have probably wore it maybe all of five times just because it is no structure. I don't, I tend to like more structured bags and I do have shoulders that are slumping down a little bit. So for me, this would always slip off my bag. I used it for work maybe once and it's just, it's a little loud, right? When you're going on work trips, I don't know if I particularly like to wear louder bags, but overall this is in really good shapes just because I haven't worn it at all. This is the delightful and the medium size and it, it kind of looks brand new. So I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with this. I thought about selling it, but we'll see what happens, but it's just been sitting in my closet for the longest time. And the reason why I haven't gotten rid of it is just like, well, it's my first Louis Vuitton. Should I get let go of it? But if it's just sitting there, why, why, why should I do that? Right? So I don't know. Just let me know what you think. Should I let go of it or should I keep it for a sentimental reason saying, hey, this is my first ever Louis Vuitton? The second bag that I got that's left in my collection is actually going to be the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse in the reverse monogram. So my trip in 2020 got canceled because, you know, there's something called COVID. So we had to cancel our trip. Our flight didn't even take off. They, they sent us a cancellation. I was supposed to go with my friend. And of course, like everybody else, when you have disposable income and you can't spend it anywhere because you're locked up in your house, you're like, well, where, where, where can I spend my money? I went to the Louis Vuitton store out of sheer boredom because I got locked up in the house and I decided to purchase this one on a whim because I just like, I need retail therapy for being locked up for so long. And I, I'm glad I purchased this because this is one of my favorite bags. I travel with this. I love how the, the, the top handle here is not the traditional vaquetta, vachetta, and I don't have to worry about it getting stained. This one is made in the USA. The first one is made in France. This one is made in the USA. And overall, the condition of this bag has been great. So like, I know there's a lot of complaints, you know, and a lot of glazing issues, but I think this is the second version of it. So I have had not had any glazing issues and it looks it looks pretty immaculate. I don't wear this bag that often, but when I do travel, I love how compact it is. You can just throw it into your carry out without worrying about it getting crushed or the leather kind of crinkling just because there's stuff on top of it. It's a very carefree bag as well as the durability just because it's a nice canvas, right? And it feels really substantial. I will say that the, the canvas on this feels much better than my delightful. Not sure why there's a that much of a big difference, but I feel like this this is a lot more substantial than the canvas on the tote bag. This third bag that I have here is the Neo No Way. I feel like I've got a very classic collection and I haven't gone into the territory of the limited collection at all. And this one I got from Rebag and of course, do not trust Rebag. Go check out that video and all of the horror stories that are out there via Rebag. But at the time, when I got it from Rebag, they were still a solid company. 
I did a couple trade-ins because I've been wanting this bag for such a long time. And these, this is one of my favorite bags, even though I don't reach for it anymore. Just, I, I don't know why, but I love the designs of this because this strap is adjustable. You can wear it as a shoulder bag, but then when you open it up, you can turn it into a crossbody bag pretty quickly. So I thought that was the smartest design ever. And I wish a lot more companies would do that because then it would make the bag much more seamless and a lot more versatile. So that's one of my favorite designs of this particular bag. And then on the inside, you can see there are two different compartments and I did purchase two uh, inserts to go in there to protect the suede lining of the bag. Overall, this is a pretty solid bag. It is a nice bucket bag. It's a very you know popular option. I will say, I, I don't think this particular model holds its value very much for whatever reason. But I would say this, if you are looking for your first Louis Vuitton, I think this is a great option. Either the Petit Pochette Matisse or perhaps the Neo Noe is a great option. This is in an MM size. Again, I don't wear this bag very often just because don't cancel me for this, but I'm kind of very tired of the monogram. It's the same thing over and over again. And yes, it is very iconic and yes, it's very recognizable, but I have shifted away from, you know, the monogram that's plastered all over, which is why I've slimmed down from seven pieces down to only four of them. And maybe two in the future. I don't know. Maybe I'll have a vlog sale and see who would love give a new life to these pieces and actually use them since I don't really gravitate towards these bags anymore. You're watching me having an internal debate on, live on video right now because I don't know how I feel about these Louis Vuitton bags anymore. What do you think? Do you love Louis Vuitton? Are you a diehard Louis Vuitton lover? I'm trying to see where this one says it's made and I can't find the tag. Can somebody tell me where to find where this one's made? Comment down below for me, help me out here. So that is the third Louis Vuitton bag. The fourth Louis Vuitton bag I have is actually another one of my favorites because I love the versatility of the on the go. And of course, I think I really like the on prompt option here. If I were to purchase more Louis Vuitton bags, I probably would gravitate towards the on prompt collection. And this one is in black, which I know it's kind of crazy. I'm wearing a black bag. Majority of the time I do, actually 100% of the time when I do grab this bag, I use it for work because it's got the monogram, but it is all embossed into the bag. And I do like the giant monograms. It is very low key. And I do love the versatility of this bag because you've got the long straps, which I think is so smart. And a lot of companies are, are doing this now. And then if you don't want to use the long straps, you can actually turn it into a top handle. I don't need to talk about this that much anymore because this has been overdone. I know the on the go were, was released. I watched Winnie B LV's, um, the mini unboxing. That is adorable. If it came an on prompt, which I'm sure they'll probably release it an on prompt, I might think about getting it because it's actually super freaking adorable. And I did purchase this one off of Poshmark and I, I did cover the story about how I purchased it and I panicked because I, I've never really bought one from Poshmark and I ran over to the Louis Vuitton store where they have now the newer ones have the microchips and I made the Louis Vuitton uh, sales associates help me out and they couldn't find the microchip. It took them forever to find a microchip, but they did finally find it to make sure it was authentic. And this one is made in the USA. So um, there are two pieces here that are made in USA. The Neo Noe is unknown, but this is my fourth and last Louis Vuitton bag in my collection. So, I mean, as I'm, as I'm filming this video, I feel like I'm not excited to talk about Louis Vuitton. Am I just, I'm pretty sure if you've been watching me for a while, I'm pretty sure you can hear it in my voice. I'm just kind of tired. I, I watch all these videos. I enjoy looking at them, but when I look at Louis Vuitton, I'm just, there's no feel, no feel. Meh. That's how I feel about it. Let me know what you think. I just think that Louis Vuitton just keeps cranking out, you know, different iterations of the same bag. And I'm just quite bored of it. I like what I have. I don't see foresee myself buying any more Louis Vuitton bags. If anything, I will be probably letting more go. Just haven't decided which ones. 
I am thinking out loud here. And if you can guess which two I'm thinking about letting go, comment down below. But I really hope you enjoy my ramblings here and just covering my entire Louis Vuitton collection in an unconventional way. Tell me if I'm stupid for not liking Louis Vuitton anymore. Life is hard. I want to help you save time and money so that you can somehow adult easier and hopefully less than retail. I'll see you all next time.